We're here to see if we can help with the, uh, the adoption. Um, Capture is a uh, fairly, Capture's a fairly small local software company. Um, I'm the CTO, and um, it's probably a company that none of you have ever heard of, but actually interact with fairly frequently. Um, we build point of sale systems, software and hardware, and have thousands of terminals in Western Europe. Um, our customers include large sites like our Twickenham Stadium, Wimbledon, um, Ascot Racecourse, they're actually trading with our systems today, and tens of British universities. So, hands up, who's read the uh, Bitcoin white paper? <laughs> You'd hope so. So, um, the paper says Bitcoin is electronic cash. Uh, Bitcoin doesn't make very good sense as a day-to-day -day electronic cash. We need, we need something else. Um, the, uh, using cards, the banks have set a level of expectation of around two to three seconds with very modest fees. Um, and that's where we need to be competing. Waiting 10 minutes, waiting 60 minutes is, is not good enough. Um, what we have here, and um, Nano solves these issues in a, in a very efficient manner. Um, I, I won't say it was obvious, because it certainly wasn't obvious to me until um, Colin, Colin came up with it. But what we have now is, a, um, is the answer to the original problem. Um, it's practically instant. It's fearless payments, and it's a public immutable ledger. Um, I've been personally involved in the crypto industry for a very long time. Um, it's taken until now and the Nano project for me to be able to merge my personal and business passions. Um, this is, I'm going to show you today, in just a moment actually, a, um, a real life, a, a true commercial POS system that, that uses this. Um, and. Um, this is ready to ship practically now. We've got some QA to do, um, but the product is ready. Um, we need the version 19 update, but that's just around the corner. Um, but what we're doing now is on version 18. It's the uh, production blockchain, and we've got, we'll do a, a demo in a minute with Natrium. Um, so we operate in three sectors, um, business and industry, um, higher education, and stadia and leisure. Um, now, higher education is an obvious win for crypto. You've got a captive audience. Um, they should be, the demographic should be receptive to this kind of technology. And um, these, in, these institutions are running, um, they're running blockchain postgrads at the moment. So, so this gives them an opportunity to literally put their money where their mouth is. Um, once we've cracked high red, we've got, um, we've got normal, we've got schools, we've got primary and secondary schools, and um, we can link biometrics to a, to, to a student's keys, and the parents can literally load money for the children's lunch onto a public ledger that they can see. Now, this is a use case we have now. Um, Capture currently ships systems to lots of um, British schools, and um, this is already a requirement. So what we're doing is replacing our current centralized ledger with a decentralized equivalent. Um, when we started this project, we had some questions we wanted to get to the bottom of. Do we run nodes on our terminals? Um, do we hold private keys? How do we denominate value? And what to do about tax? Now, running, on, running nodes on our terminals is ideological, but not, not practical, really. We can't convince the IT guys that we get involved with about our firewall and bandwidth requirements. Um, we host our own node, and we host services to interact with it. Uh, we never touch private keys. Doing so is legally challenging, at least in the UK. And we can get around this nicely anyway with Nano. So what we do is we request our merchants to generate a pool of accounts, public keys. Uh, we keep a, uh, a record of those, and we cycle through them and just monitor activity on them effectively. We're isolated account chain observers. This protects us from some of the legal stuff which you could get involved with if you had to hold private keys and makes it easier, easier for us to sell, basically. Um, our integration is completely native. Our merchants will take fiat alongside crypto, so all of the payments, um, all, all of the transaction values are all expressed in the fiat local currency. But the operation reports and receipts show nano and fiat side by side, so, from a, so you can reconcile the system more easily. Um, what this does is, um, the merchant will actually receive nano as a um, pure nano. They won't receive fiat. It'll be instant, it'll be fearless, 
and the merchant will be responsible for receiving the nano and doing as they will with it. Now, they obviously have to sell that periodically to cover their operating costs and their tax liabilities. And um, this is one of the reasons why we think higher ed is a really good place to get started with this. Um, their operators have a use case which is greater than just fees. Um, they have a, a vested interest. They've got the blockchain courses already. They've got the skills in-house to actually get some expert advice. And um, we've actually started talking to a few British universities already. Um, and once QA is finished on this, we're ready to go into trials with it this academic year. So that's going to be, as far as I can see, I think this is sort of really closing the loop and it should get nano and crypto in general into the, into the public sector and people can start trading with it. So what we're going to do now, and Colin's going to be my, uh, my customer, is um, sell a coffee, effectively. So um, if you just want to come over here to the uh, machine. So we only have espresso, I'm afraid, Colin, so that's it. So I'm going to press espresso on the till, um, hit the subtotal bar here, choose nano. Um, the first screen we see is a, the fiat price. Uh, we show the price in nano and we show the current exchange rate, which is based as a standard trading pair. Okay, so if I press exact amount here, what we should get on the back there is a QR code. If you scan that and press confirm, it should pre-fill the value for you. We also express the, uh, the, price in value, the price in fiat and the price in nano on the back as well, and the current exchange rate. Okay, so Colin's bought a coffee. Thank you, Colin. And on the exchange rate, on the, on the receipt here, we show the, uh, the price in nano, the price in fiat, and the current exchange rate. Perfect. Okay, so that's basically it. Thanks, guys. So, any questions? Yes. You facilitate nano payments. Uh, what does the merchant do with the nano? Do they hang on to it? Do you transfer it to convert it to fiat for them, or do you just not worry about that at all? The merchant receives pure nano. We don't do the fiat thing. We're not using payment gateways or anything. We really like this to be pure. Um, there's some payment gateway stuff out there already. So we're just nano. So the merchant receives nano. Um, they, we anticipate anyway that they will sell it periodically. And they might use a service like Wirex. Um, we'll give them a nice, uh, nice off-ramp. The other thing they could do, and one of the guys here suggested this earlier. I think, you, Edward? Edwin? Um, is that the, uh, that the merchant can actually sell it back to the, uh, to the customers. So initially, we're going to start in a, uh, in a higher ed kind of closed loop environment. That's what, that's what we're going to do this year. How does the merchant uh, set up nano accounts or tie them to a particular uh, point, of, point of sale device? Uh, we don't tie accounts to the point of sale device. We, we, we have a, a concept of a merchant and the merchant has a pool of accounts. Uh, they would have thousands of accounts we anticipate, so we'd pre-generate those beforehand in a wallet, put them into our database, and um, our system here hits a service in the back end, picks a, an account randomly out of that list, and uses that for the QR code generation on the back. So that's kind of the idea. So it's not, um, it doesn't solve the, uh, well, I wouldn't say it needs solving, but there's, there's a, the privacy concern that people talk about is obfuscated somewhat by the number of accounts you add. So you could have 10 accounts and have very little privacy, or the merchant could have 100,000 accounts and be very little exposure. What are the fees compared to any Visa payment system for the merchants? What are the fees for the... Yeah. How much do we charge for the system itself? Yeah. Um, I, 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 like I'll quote you separately for that. If, <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, a large commercial system. We, we charge quite a lot for it, to be honest. But um, there's, a, there's a back end, there's support, there's project management, there's installation, there's all this kind of stuff. We, we, we really sell this into large sites, so we sell sort of four or five hundred machines at a time. Is it like competitive with what uh, Visa is charging or what other things are we're, doing? We're very competitive, yeah. We're, we're less expensive than our competition. So why do you need V19? I'm curious. Um, so, so at the moment, we, we, this development here is on version 18, uh, obviously, because it's live and we just hit Natrium. Um, we need the WebSocket support, really, for some of the same reasons that Colin was talking about afterwards. From a firewall point of view, using the, uh, the, the HTTP callback stuff is not elegant. Yeah, you're right. I, I, I have dealt with the same already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that, that's what we want, and um, that, that's the only reason we want version 19, actually. We can, as you can see, we can do it with 18, but um, 
I've had to move this onto a separate system and it's not as secure as we'd like, so it's completely isolated from the rest of our back end. Thank you. This device is intended to sit on the counter. It's not intended to be embedded in machines, or do you have a version for that? We, we, we do do um, other, we do vending as well. So we have um, some big BNI sites in Western Europe, and we have devices that we can fit inside vending machines. And currently we do that with RFID, so it's a contactless tag on, that we tap on the outside. Um, we haven't really looked at whether we're going to do crypto with that at the moment, because I would have to render a QR code on the outside of the vending machine for a start, doing our current design. So um, that's not really on the cards at the moment. But initially, this is going to be EPOS. It's going to be in bars, restaurants, cafes, that kind of thing, inside, initially, universities. When you're having a conversation with one of your customers, you, yeah. et cetera, what do you say to them about the concerns around the fact that, inevitably, there is a fluctuation in value? Of course, yeah, and, and that's a, at the moment that's a, a problem for us. Um, the, the, one of the reasons, well, we, we're going to hire Ed first because obviously we, we, we know that they're going to have the skills to kind of look at that problem sensibly. Um, we're not tricking them or trying to explain it and get around any issues. Um, yeah, th th there's a risk that they're, they're potentially, if it's a small outfit, if it's a sole trader or something, they're exposed to capital gains. Um, if it's a limited company, they can... They don't have to worry about that bit so much, but the, there's still lots of issues that they, that, yeah, that, that they could be selling a, a something for one price one minute and it'd be worth less by the time they cash out. And um, that's something that this whole industry is exposed to. There's no answer to it. Um, so a, a merchant will either decide that that's within their risk framework or they won't. Considering that most people here are sort of nano enthusiasts yeah. in some form, um, when you do start rolling this out, will you have... Um, let us know where they are, because people like to make pilgrimages to, Absolutely, yeah. to see. I appreciate almost that's part of the discussion you'll be having with the, yeah. be that, could we publicize this as well? Is that yeah, when I speak to the, um, these higher ed establishments, I'll, um, I'll ask their permission to uh, tweet about it and put it on here. And if they're OK with it, I'll tweet it. And when it gets installed, obviously, it'll be public knowledge anyway. Yeah. So you can, you can, in the UK, you can go there and buy a coffee. What's the uh, reason behind uh, generating like a, a pool of addresses instead of making use of non-hardened public keys, like a master public key that you generate more without the private ones? The, the most important thing for us is we keep away from any kind of private material at all, and we only we, we just get public keys from the from the merchant. So the merchant generates as the public keys, and then we take those. If we can generate those in a way which is demonstrable that we're, we've got no access to any private material and we can't spend or do anything like that, then yeah. That's certainly something we can have a look at. But the, the, the current design where we, but when we sign a merchant up, maybe there'll be 10 a year, they, um, we, we get 1,000 accounts off them. It's perfectly um, scalable to do that. We, we don't need to do anything clever yet. At the moment, I, I think you're the only uh, company that is accepting Nano. Yeah. Um, but obviously, there's a lot of other payment providers that accept other cryptocurrencies as well with the point of sale systems. Um, do you see that as a threat? Do you imagine that you're going to have to diversify just to keep up because perhaps the, uh, the places that you're installing this want to accept more than just Nano? Um, or are you kind of just focused on Nano for the moment? I think our system is the only system where you actually get Nano end to end, yeah. I mean, we, we don't cash out, we, it's not, it's no payment gateway in here, the merchant will receive the, receive the nano. Um, I, don't, I don't intend to look at anything else. Uh, at, at the moment, there isn't really anything else. I'm not, I don't think, we, we did a bit of assessment of the market when we started doing this, and the, the, the well-known top 10 aren't suitable, um, that, that, that they're too slow and the fees are too high. Um, it, so a majority of our sales would very often it'd be like one coffee, it'd be a sandwich, and you'd be paying fees equivalent to the cost of the coffee. So it's not an option. Um, this is, the, the, Nano is the only way as far as we can see at the moment. We, we did, did do a code review on a few other coins early on and um, they weren't really, well, I won't talk about them, but, but Nano is the only one we picked. Thank you.